Tiffany, throughout her life, has dedicated herself to the teaching profession. Today she is a mature woman with silver hair and a wise eye. There have been many sorrowful events in her life. First, she lost her beloved husband suddenly. Then her daughter and son-in-law were killed in an automobile accident. Only her favorite granddaughter, who was 20 years old at the time, survived the accident. But unfortunately, the girl was confined to a wheelchair. Tiffany without delay took her granddaughter to herself, taking all the care and responsibility. Three years have passed since the terrible accident, but Emily, as her granddaughter's name was, did not give up. She dreamed of leaving the chair and walking again. Emily carefully followed all the recommendations of doctors and performed the necessary therapeutic procedures, exercise, injections, massage. An expensive surgery was suggested, but the doctors could not guarantee that Emily would be able to walk again, and Tiffany did not have that kind of money. Today, Tiffany and her trusty friend Linda went for a morning walk in the park. They loved this park for its quiet alleys where they could enjoy the fresh air and pleasant conversation. After their walk, they planned to stop by the local store to buy some fresh produce. When they reached their favorite small bench by the pond, Tiffany noticed a young man sitting on it. He was sitting with his shoulders slumped, looking sad, seeming to be struggling to hold back tears. Tiffany's heart squeezed with pity for the stranger. She crouched down beside him. Excuse me, young man, are you all right? She asked softly. The man sighed and replied, I'm having a little difficulty. I just got out of detention yesterday. Don't be frightened. I didn't kill anyone. I need money to go to another city where my father lives. He's waiting for me. He's worried. I had a small amount of money with me, but I was robbed. Tiffany listened to him carefully, feeling the sincerity in his words. She pulled her purse out of her purse and took out some bills, holding them out to the young man. Take these, she said. I hope it will be enough to get to your father. Thank you very much. I'll be sure to give it to you. The young man thanked her. My name is Mark. And what's yours? Mrs. Tiffany. Thank you, Mrs. Tiffany. As soon as I can, I'll be sure to pay you back. He thanked again and ran to the exit. Linda, who was watching, splashed her hands and started to scold her friend, Tiffany. Why are you doing this? Look at him. He's lying to us. I don't believe him. He's not going to give you anything back. But Tiffany only smiled. She sensed that the young man was not lying. I believe him, Linda, she replied quietly. Sometimes you just have to trust people, especially since his father is waiting for him. We have to help each other out. Tiffany got up from the bench and she and Linda continued on their way to the store. On the way, Linda continued to express her displeasure but Tiffany remained calm, confident that she was doing the right thing. When Tiffany returned home, she told her granddaughter Emily, who approved of what her grandmother had done. A few months went by. One day, an expensive car pulled up outside Tiffany's house. A young man, confident and well-dressed, got out. He walked to Tiffany's house and rang the bell. The door slowly opened. In front of him, a young woman with blue eyes sat in a wheelchair. Her blonde long hair touched her shoulders. The young man couldn't take his eyes off her face. Her eyes radiated kindness that they seemed capable of melting even the coldest heart. It was love at first sight. Hello, does Mrs. Tiffany live here? He said with difficulty. Emily smiled, nodded affirmatively, and called out to her grandmother. Tiffany came over, looked at her guest carefully, and remembered, Mark? Yes, that's me. Mrs. Tiffany, I'm sorry I didn't pay you back right away. I've had a lot on my plate lately. He handed her an envelope of money and a box of chocolates as a token of his gratitude. If it weren't for your eyes, I wouldn't have recognized you. Laughed the old woman. You look very decent. You put on a suit, shaved, it's a pleasure to look at you. Join us for dinner, Emily suggested, a little embarrassed. At the table that evening, Mark told his story of how he had ended up in prison, how he'd been falsely accused by a colleague he'd always considered a friend. 
This doctor, without Mark's consent, had taken a woman in for surgery who unfortunately died. To cover up his guilt in this tragedy, he forged documents and accused Mark. Mark was taken into custody during the investigation, but then they sorted it out and released him. Now Mark has returned to his former place of work at the medical clinic, where he is the head of the surgical department. I only talk about myself all evening, please satisfy my curiosity. He turned to Emily, tell me, why are you in a wheelchair? I don't like to remember those events, Emily began to tell him, with sadness in her voice. My parents and I were in a terrible accident, they died on the spot, and I survived, but I can't walk. At first it was hard for me to accept that fact, but now I'm used to it. I've learned to cope, Tiffany's my rock. Emily, may I see your medical records, Emily? I'm a doctor. Yes, of course, Emily replied. Tiffany gave Mark Emily's medical records. Over the next few days, Mark scrutinized them and consulted with colleagues. He returned to Tiffany and Emily with good news. The surgery was possible and he was ready to do it himself. Tiffany couldn't believe her ears. She looked at Mark with gratitude and hope. It would be a miracle, she said, squeezing his hand. But we don't have that kind of money. Don't worry about money, Mark replied confidently. I'll take care of everything. The important thing is that Emily gets a chance to recover. Emily, though touched by the offer, felt fear and uncertainty. She was used to her condition and was afraid of false hope. I don't want to be disappointed again, she admitted quietly to Mark. Mark looked into her eyes with tenderness and determination. I promise you that I will do everything I can to make sure you can walk again. Give us a chance, Emily. After much thought, Emily agreed. The surgery was scheduled for the following week. On the day of the surgery, Tiffany was excited and prayed for her granddaughter's success and health. Mark performed the surgery with brilliance and it was a success. When Emily regained consciousness, she saw Mark holding her hand. Everything went well, he said with a smile. You're going to walk. Tears of joy and relief flowed down her cheeks. Emily thanked Mark, but he smiled at her happiness. Over the next few weeks, Emily gradually recovered. She saw the care and attention Mark had given her. She was very grateful to him for that. A week after she was discharged from the hospital, a familiar car pulled up in front of Tiffany's house and Mark got out with a large bouquet of flowers. Emily, look out the window. Your fiance's here, Tiffany said, peering through the curtain. I have a feeling we'll be married soon. Are you sure about that? Emily asked. Yes, I think you're sure. Too, Tiffany laughed, holding her granddaughter Emily close to her.